I thank the gentleman for yielding and uh, and I thank him for the way in which he framed the debate and, and did it in a way we can all understand. But this has been a troubling uh, episode as well. You know, I think uh, what I, I guess what I'd call bonus gate, uh, you know, begins, I like to think, with three words. We've heard a lot of three words recently. We've heard the word inherit, we've heard the word transparency, and we've heard the word accountability. Well, this is not a situation that was inherited by this administration or by this majority. This was a situation that came into being on their watch. Uh, this is a situation where they've not been transparent, quite the opposite. They've done everything they can to obscure what happened, when it happened, who's responsible. And finally, it's certainly an incident where, at least to this point, nobody has been held accountable for anything. It's just something that somehow is unfortunate, but we're going to move collectively to try and correct before we've even identified who created the problem for us in the first place. What do we know? Well, we do know a lot. You know, we do know that Secretary Geithner has been involved uh, in, in designing legislation around both the bailout and the stimulus literally since November, really since September, as uh, involved in his capacity uh, as director of Federal Reserve, chairman of Federal Reserve in New York. We do know that, uh, frankly, he was aware at some point late last year or more probably early this year at the minimum that there were going to be large bonuses paid. That, that, that uh, certainly the Fed had been informed that and we would expect in his position there and as Secretary Treasurer he would have been informed. We do know that he had the means to stop this. Uh, he literally uh, released $30 billion at the beginning of this month to AIG. At that point, he could have literally said, look, you do this, no money. Uh, you're bankrupt. I suspect something could have happened where uh, these bonuses wouldn't have been paid out. We also know that he didn't bother to tell the President of the United States for whom he works and to whom he is responsible anything about this until the day before it happened. That's what the Secretary has said. That's what the President has said. Uh, uh, you know, so we know that Mr. Geithner has been around this problem a lot. And we know that he did not, or it appears he did not, inform the President of its dimension. Now the second thing we know relates to the stimulus bill. And my friend Mr. La Tourette went through that pretty well. We had a bill that was rammed through, that literally was put together in a hurry, where this body guaranteed its members by unanimous bipartisan vote we would have time to read it. We weren't given the time that in this body we said we would give members uh, to give it. We know that the bill eventually ended up in a conference committee. We have a pretty good idea who the six people were that were there, one of whom we now presume uh, had nothing to do with this. I'm sure I, I would certainly take the chairman at his word. Um, and we know that that language was inserted in that conference. Uh, it was not something that was inherited from the last administration. It was not something, to be fair, that was even in the first version of the stimulus bill. It was something that was specifically put there. And so while we know that the majority didn't read the bill, and we know that the minority didn't read the bill, and I doubt the president read the bill, somebody read the bill, somebody read the bill well enough to know, hey, there's language in here that's going to prevent the payment of bonuses and we need to get that out and put something in. So somebody did in re indeed finally read the bill. We also know that uh, today, you know, rather than confront those questions, we decided we'd do everything we could on the floor of this body to look like we were doing something. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I would argue we made a lot of the same mistakes. Uh, you know, we, we presented a bill that hadn't gone through committee, that people hadn't seen, that hadn't been discussed, uh, because we needed to show that we were going to act. And we presented a resolution, which thank goodness did not make it through, uh, which essentially would have exonerated the administration. Now, those are all things that we know. What should we do is now the real question, it seems to me. The first thing we should do is do what the president did in the very first week of this administration and say, I made a mistake. You know, I think the classic word was, I screwed up. You know, I think the president, the administration, certainly the majority, screwed up. I think admitting it would be helpful. 
The second thing I would do if I were the President of the United States is fire the Secretary of the Treasury. You know, I wouldn't wait for him to resign. I would make the point. If there's something this explosive and this important and this damaging and you know about it for months and you don't bother to tell me about it until the day before it happens when I'm in almost no position to do anything about it, I'm sorry, you're not really who I need to be the Secretary of the Treasury. Goodbye. Uh, I think the president would score enormous points within his own party. Indeed, earlier this evening, we actually heard essentially a Democratic member of Congress calling on this floor for him to do exactly that, something he ought to do. Finally, we need the people in that room to just simply fess up. One out of six of them did it. And, and if they did it at somebody else's instructions at the White House, then they ought to tell us who that was, who sent that language down or I drafted it, or whatever. But there's not that many people involved. You know, um, I still retain faith that the truth is going to come out here and that people will step up and do the right thing. The, uh, the great uh, British uh, statesman, Winston Churchill, was often exasperated uh, with our people, and with the United States, he used to like to say, you can always count on the American people to do the right thing after they've exhausted every other possibility. I would suggest that's what the administration has been doing. They've been exhausting possibilities, but in the end, they just simply need to do the right thing. Fire the secretary, in my opinion, who, who, who certainly has not served this president well. Admit whoever put this language in there that they did it and tell us who instructed or asked them or requested that they do it. And finally, just level with the American people instead of pass smokescreen, whitewash legislation, which, by the way, is dangerous in and of itself, as my friend from Ohio alluded. Uh, you don't use the tax code as a punitive weapon directed at people. It's cl pretty close to a bill of attainder. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's an extraordinarily bad and blunt instrument. And, you, and to do it only to provide cover. Uh, you know, is, is I think a dangerous thing. I don't think many of my colleagues who voted for this on the other side expect that this will become law. This was a political exercise on this floor put together at the last minute to give people cover when they went home. So let's, uh, let's uh, show Mr. Churchill uh, uh, for once that perhaps he's mistaken. Uh, perhaps we can do the right thing without exhausting every other possibility. And I ask the administration to step forward and do that, provide the kind of leadership that the, pro the president promised that he would give us in the campaign. Leadership that's transparent, leadership that's accountable. With that, I yield back to my friend from Ohio. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Cole, and, and thank you not only for your comments, but also for the clue. And, and, uh